quarter of a metre. I don't think we're in a position where we could afford to move into it because I think the rents that they're going to be off asking inside um, this new area is just going to be out of our, out of our bounds. I just don't think that... Uh, I think as a business, we're a, a small family business, I think it will be the end of it. Councillor Hedges was quoted as saying that if they had the money, they'd develop the city in a different way, although he's rejecting the protesters' plans. What is the alternative? If the, if the alternative is the piecemeal development, well, how are we going to fund it and what's, what's it going to end up looking like? And uh, the idea that we can become like Milan or like Barcelona, well, unfortunately, we don't have the weather for it. There's more to Barcelona's success than the climate. The 92 Olympic Games brought a significant boost. But years before that, the city says it was committed to a renaissance that benefited all citizens. For many years now, people who are interested in improving towns and cities have been beating a path here to Barcelona. The Catalonian capital has become a model for how to make a city not just a better place to live, but somewhere that attracts investors. Barcelona shows that beauty can actually mean good business. Architect David Mackey, who's lived and worked here for 40 years, has been in the forefront of Barcelona's rejuvenation. Of course. This is one of the things about a city. Um, it's, it looked to see what it was, recognised what it was, and then reinforced it, reconstructed its own personality and character. How important is it for something like a Rambles, for example? It's a wonderful example of how people are more important than traffic. If you notice, we're walking in the middle of the street, and the traffic is on either side, and it's always full of people. It's, it's one of those places where people come just to walk up and down, to meet, uh, and it's the centre, it's the centre of the city. What do you think about building a big shopping centre in the middle of a city? You mean the American idea of putting lots of shops and things and creating an artificial street? Uh, this is a, a negation of a city. This is a, a one way to destroy any city, is to uh, exclude, be exclusive. A city must be inclusive of everything. Tell me then about your building, which we're coming up to now. That brings into it all the sort of things you've just been talking about, doesn't it? Well, this is, uh, this, this is about architecture that has a vocation to be part of the city. We persuaded the clients to cut a, a street through their building. This street didn't exist. So people coming up and down the Ramblers could actually see the 14th century Gothic tower from the, the street. This was very important architecturally and urbanistically because then it opens up the old city behind and allows people who are normally in the Rambler to go into the old city. It brings life through. It's like, a, like an artery, shall we say, in. In the late 1970s, though, things looked bleak for Barcelona. It had lost 40% of its jobs. The city authority realised it had to act fast. At Barcelona's annual road race, we caught up with the mayor, Juan Clos, as he presided over events. He told us the most important way to turn a city around is to start with the small things that matter to ordinary citizens. At the beginning of the 80s, we hadn't any money because we were in a very bad economical shape. And uh, in a way, to, to say to the people, mm, we are going to begin a, a, a way upwards. Uh, we are going to, to, to show you what we are uh, looking for. And we began doing things in the neighborhoods. And that was uh, really very important because people uh, ha had the feeling that really we were uh, looking for a long uh, strategy uh, path. The value of the city went up. And, uh, of course, as our taxes come from the, uh, out of the value of the city, the property of the value, not the number of people who lives in, but the value of the premises, uh, fortunately, we, we now are in a good position and we have a surplus uh, superavit since uh, five years ago now, uh, and we are reducing debt and we are investing quite a lot. So the city found that having an overall vision and then spending public money gradually increase the value of the city's assets over time, strengthening its appeal to private investors. Mackey says all cities can do this. Once they realize that they're wealthy and they're powerful, they can sit down and discuss democratically from a powerful position with the private sector, which is weaker. But if you think that you're weaker and the private sector stronger, you'll never get anywhere. It's sometimes difficult. 
it's sometimes it's not easy to deal with the developers, but you know, to keep that standard is for us, it has been crucial. Swansea's got its own geography, its own culture, its own waterfront, its only livelihood, it's all there. You've got to, people should get out, politicians, professionals, leave their desks, leave their tables, go out in the street and have a look, and they'll be surprised how much they can learn. Swansea will never be Barcelona, but the qualities of this avenue are very similar to the qualities of the Barcelona, and we should of Barcelona, and we should look to Barcelona for what these qualities are. What are the bits that make it work? And the really great thing in Swansea is we've got the central ga gathering place, like the Plata de Catalunya in Barcelona, where the community gathers. It's the old historic city gathers at the top and feeds down all the way down to, is it Columbus statue at the bottom of the Rambla, yes. where the bay is, and all the new development. Terrific investment in Swansea down at the bottom end. Unfortunately, it's blocked off. So we have to link all that, form our backbone in Swansea, exactly like the Rambla. So what are these qualities that we're gonna put in there? You think it could work? Oh, absolutely, sir. We've got a wonderful city, it's a great city. We've got a great place up there we can make. We've got a wonderful investment down the seafront. Clearly the bay's our greatest asset, the fact that we're sitting on the sea. Lovely marina development, new museum down there. Let's link it all together and give the investment market confidence in this. Let's say it costs 10 million. The 10 million that the, it's rumored that the WDA are going to put into the private sector development. Why should we be subsidizing private sector development when 10 million could be invested in the city, confidence in the city, doing the job that the city wants done here. Some in Swansea are worried that the planning process is actually preventing the things Barcelona has done, giving people a direct say in shaping their future. In this country, when a council grants outline planning permission to a developer, the details of the plans don't have to be filled in until after a site has been handed over. Some of the council's own members have voted against the scheme. This process of having an outline scheme and then the detail is very difficult, in my view, with a major inner city redevelopment scheme as is being proposed. Nobody can tell you what it will really look like or even what elements will really be in it. You can't look at a model, you can't even look at drawings. And it's not possible at the moment for the people of Swansea to express a view on the design and the shape of whatever development we're going to be having in the city centre. I think that what, what people were saying was that this is going to be a sort of concrete tomb around the city centre. I think that when we see the designs come out, we'll see something entirely different. I think that what we've got is a situation where people are, are dealing in misinformation, trying to stop the city centre of Swansea redeveloping. Councillor Hedges now has, has said, fight for Swansea, and he's receiving lots of letters. But I don't think he's had the support that we've had. I mean, we're talking about 26,000 people who've supported us. People can change things, can't they? If people feel strongly enough about it, and if there are enough people who feel strongly about it, people change things. We are certainly hoping that the public feel behind the scheme, that they're feeling they are being consulted. There are obviously concerns. Any major scheme in any town of this scale will have concerns, and we can understand those totally. But Simon's partners, MEPC, have been accused of arm-twisting. Before a crucial meeting with Swansea Council in September, the developers said, a business decision has got to be made. If we do not get that undertaking today, we will not spend another penny on Castle Keys. The council accepted the scheme. In the past, Swansea has done well attracting private funds to redevelop its marina and waterfront. But to date, it hasn't been able to encourage much private investment into the city centre. The council blames this on its inability to get outside public investment when it's in competition with Cardiff. There is no alternative. That we either have this TV development or we have nothing. I can't imagine MEPC wanted to build a, a very large edifice in the centre of Swansea uh, which has uh, no shops in it. These are the kinds of political dilemmas which you know, we associate with, with developing countries, with frontier economies. It's not what one would expect of a mature European city, a sophisticated society. Perhaps Groningen in the Netherlands is another place we should be looking to for inspiration. <laughs>